<laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Friday, April the 10th. Come on in and join me. Today we're going to be making the zigzag squares block. Today's block is going to be an 8-inch quilt block. You'll see an example of it here on the screen. Come on in and join me. I'm going to pull up this video and hopefully our internet, our internet was acting a little wishy-washy a second ago. Hopefully you'll be able to follow along and I can see the live chat. We have a couple of questions. We have four questions actually lined up for today. So if you want to play along with that, the zigzag squares. Hello. Hi, everybody. Today we're making zigzags. Zigzags, yes we are, and uh, make sure you stay to the end, or if you have to leave during the live, come back to the end, come back to this video, because I'll show you what we're making tomorrow at the end of today's video, and I'm going to go ahead and give you Sunday's block as well, because we have a little bit of homework to do before Sunday. We're doing applique on Sunday, yes we are. You'll notice down in the description box, there's a file to download. If you're a member of the Creative Crew group, the file is there as well. Hello, everybody. Today we're making the zigzag squares block. Yes, zigzag squares. Let me show you what this quilt would look like repeated in case you missed it yesterday. It's pretty interesting, right? I like that a lot. I think there's all different kinds of things you could do with this block. You could use the same two fabrics repeated. You could do different hues of the colors. So same two colors, just different mid-tones, dark tones, light tones. Or you could go totally scrappy with this block. And I think that would be amazing as well. This block makes some pretty interesting repeated secondary patterns, right? I like that. Yes, I do. I have my new camera set up. <laughs> and the only thing I did not think about putting the camera this way is I have two great big windows there and I get easily distracted when I see something move and our neighbor is cutting the grass. So every once in a while he catches my eye. <laughs> and I'm looking. Hello, everybody. Or when a car goes by, just, just like that. Yes, the zigzag squares block. I have all of my pieces cut out and these are the pieces on the screen for today. If you're sewing with me live, go ahead and jot them down and get them cut out. Maybe you got them yesterday. Nancy, you got lots of snow. My glory. I've heard lots of people are getting snow right now. Today it's really sunny here in Virginia. It's a little bit cooler than it has been. Snowing in upstate New York. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Ms. Chantel, for moderating. Thank you so, so much. So we have four questions lined up for today. Today's block should go by pretty quick. We're doing some half square triangles. If you want to make them bigger and in a different way than what I'm going to show you in today's video, you're more than welcome to do that. You can make them bigger and trim them down. Remember, if you have questions, if you put all of your questions in all caps, it makes it a lot easier for me to see. And don't forget to stay to the end so you can see tomorrow and Easter Sunday's block. All right, I'm going to take this off the screen. I'm going to go ahead and show you my work table and all of my pieces. We're going to go over the pieces. Dawn, don't say that. Don't say that. No. No snow. Take it back. All right, I'm going to show you the screens for today. And I forgot to put today's little caption in there so we have a black space right there <laughs> hold on I can do that real quick 
Da -da -da -da. I can add it in there. I knew I was forgetting to do something. Zig, zag, square. Eight, whoops. Eight inch quilt block. Video number 18. 18 blocks, y'all. 18 blocks. My goodness. Y'all see the design wall behind me, right? It's so pretty. I played around with the blocks earlier this morning, just doing some fun rearranging back there. All right, it's up on the screen now. <laughs> so you'll see here, here are my pieces. Here are my pieces. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see you. So you'll see uh, we have two. These are my zigzag colors. These are my background colors. From the zigzag, we have two, two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. We have four, two and a half by four and a half. We have the background color, four, two and a half by two and a half, and two, se two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Yes, and the very first thing we're going to do today is we're going to be working with the two and seven eighths blocks. Two backgrounds and two zigzag colors. All right, these other ones we're going to put off to the side for a minute. Let's go ahead and get started for our questions today, and then we're going to cut these apart. So great to see you all today. Our very first question of the day, and this won't surprise many of you. <laughs> yes, this is the new webcam. Much more clear of a picture than the webcam on my laptop. Let's see, the first question for today is, what is your favorite junk food? I think we've asked favorite candy, favorite food combinations. Today's, what is your favorite junk food? I love me some nachos. Nachos. To get started today, we're going to take both zigzag squares that are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. I'm going to line them up one on top of the other. I'm going to line up the little corners on my mat. And I'm going to do the same thing with the two and seven eighths by two and seven eight blocks of the background. I'm going to line those up on my mat and we're cutting these one time right down the middle on the diagonal. Right down the middle. If you want to make half square triangles that are bigger, you certainly can do that. Let me stand up. <laughs> There we go. We should have, goodness, we should have four blue triangles and four background triangles. Just like this. Oh, potato chips. Yes. I have many, many favorites of junk foods, actually, to be really honest. <laughs> I love chili cheese dogs with some mustard on the top. Chili cheese dogs, they're so good. Nachos is one of my all-time favorites, though. So here's our four triangles. Once you have these cut, we're going to go ahead and lay out this block and get it all situated, and then I'm going to give you a minute to catch up, okay? Now this block, it doesn't matter which way I turn it on the mat because it's the same from all directions. You can flip this block four times. It's going to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a background triangle. 
right there, a zigzag triangle. We're going to put the diagonal two together just like that. We're going to bring these pieces back in. We're going to take a background two and a half by two and a half and place it there. And then one of our zigzag fabrics and we're going to place it just like this. Then we're going to do that. We're going to bring in a background triangle and a zigzag triangle and lay it out just like that. And one of our background two and a half by two and a half. Just like that. Our zigzag four and a half piece, zigzag triangle, background triangle. And then our four and a half inch piece this way. Two and a half. I must have cut an extra. <laughs> I must have cut five instead of four. And just like this. So you're basically making this section as a unit. You're going to make four of those units and then put this block together as a four patch. But this is the layout. And I'm going to give you a minute to lay this out with me. And I have an extra little, <laughs> I must have cut five instead of four. Make sure one, two, oh, no, it's not extra. Beep. All right, there we go. It's Friday, feels like a Monday. There we go. <laughs> it's so great to see everybody. Hello, I hope you're having a fantastic Friday. The polka dot fabric, right? Yes. Isn't that pretty? My friend, Miss Cornelia, she sent that to me. Thank you so much. I think it's going to really pop once it all comes together, right? There we go. I'm going to take a sip of water and then guess what? We're sewing some little triangles together. Dawn, I had to eat a little bagel right before we started because I was hungry early today. But it is, well, it's going on one o'clock here, so... <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit more time with question number two because you might have a story that you want to type out if you're playing along. I'm going to go ahead and ask this question and then we're going to start sewing these four half square triangles together. Question number two for the day. Do you have any babysitting stories from when you were young? Either you had a babysitter and something happened and you have a story that you always remember or maybe you were the babysitter and you have a story that you'll always remember. That's question number two. Babysitting stories from when you were younger. I have a babysitting story. <laughs> you might not want to hear it before you eat your lunch. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go ahead and flip uh, the background triangles onto the zigzag blue color. Just like that, I'm going to take the focus is off on the layout. I think it's because there's so much going on that the camera is concentrating on the dots. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I think the dots is throwing off con concentration between the lines on the mat and the dots. I didn't think about that when I chose that fabric. We're flipping down the background fabric onto the blue fabric, and I'm going to mark that seam. Two short sides and one longer side. That is the side that we're sewing. We're sewing the longer side. That's going to be a fun question to come back and read tonight. Dodie, uh, I started off these videos on the lighter side of the mat, and people said it was hard to see. So I flipped it over to the dark side of the mat. Still hard to see. <laughs> but I need a cutting mat because we do do some cutting in these videos. So now we're going to go ahead and sew these with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you haven't set the quarter inch seam allowance on your machine and you're sewing with me, go ahead and do that. Make sure I did that. Yes, I did. And we're just going to sew this seam on all four of our half square triangles. So there's one. Here's my second. I'll go ahead and tell you my babysitting story. <laughs> I was babysitting and I was uh, maybe 13 at the time, 13. I was babysitting a girl who lived down the street and she was like uh, eight, eight or nine at the time. And she was having a sleepover with her best friend. So her and her best friend were there. And I was watching both of them. And they decided to play a game. Like a dare game. And each one of them. Individually went into the kitchen. And they were allowed to pour anything into a cup. From the kitchen. And stir it all together. And the other friend had to drink it. And whoever drank the most. Won their game. Huge mistake. Huge. <laughs> Let's just say at 13 years old, you should not have to go through what I went through that evening after they played that game. I will always remember that babysitting story. There's our third half square triangle. I'm looking forward to coming back tonight and reading your babysitting stories. Here's our fourth half square triangle. Da -da -da -da. Let's scoot this down some, down, down, down in the screen, Lisa. We have our four little half square triangles. I'm going to separate those. I'm going to wake up my iron, wake up and heat up. Time to go to work. It's time to go to work. And I'm going to trim off my dog ears while my iron is warming up. Gonna trim, trim. If you're just coming in and you missed question number one, it was what is your most favorite junk food?
Doris, they mixed all kinds of stuff up in that cup. Mustard, ketchup, mayonnaise, raw eggs, barbecue sauce, leftovers that were chunky. They cut up pizza and mixed it in there. It was, it was horrible. Horrible. It was horrible. I'm going to give these a press and then I'll scoot through and see if you have any questions. No 13 year old should have to go through that kind of punishment <laughs> as a babysitter. They did not pay me enough to deal with that. I'm going to tell you that much right now. I probably should have just put an end to that game right from the get go. If I were smarter and older at the time, I wouldn't have even let them play it. All right, y'all, what I'm going to do, let's see if, if I can move my yellow mat up here and we're going to rearrange this block again and maybe the focus will be better. I hope. Let's pull these pieces up. Oh, this mat has seen better days. Yes, it has. <laughs> Hopefully this will be better though, right? So let me lay this block out one more time. We'll see if that's not any better. That, that your half squared triangles should finish at two and a half by two and a half. The lighter side of your half square triangles should go towards the corners. Is that easier to see? I think maybe it is. There we go. Now I'm going to pause and let you catch up in case you're still making your half square triangles with me. And I'll go through. Oh, good. Thank you so much, Miss Chantel. You are on it. If I could give you a raise, I'd give you a big raise. Here's a virtual hug. Thank you so much. I think that's going to be easier to see on the yellow background. Doris, you, there are many, many different ways to make half square triangles. Uh, my goal is to show you many different ways. So we've shown you how to make four at a time, how to make eight at a time. If you really loved those methods, then you could certainly do that. Uh, I'm trying to push, push you out of your comfort zone and cutting those seven eighth measurements. If you do it, and you cut accurately and you sew accurately, you should get a finished two and a half by two and a half inch triangle that you don't have to square down or square up and bring the size down. But yes, if there's an easier way for you to do it in a way that you prefer more, then by all means, yes, do it that way. You should, if you make it bigger, you should trim it down to two and a half by two and a half. Yes, there's always, always more than one way to do just about anything, right? Pick your favorite way. Oh, I cannot wait to go through and read your stories about babysitting. <laughs> Question number three kind of ties into question number two for me, because question number three is, what is something that makes you really, really nervous? I have two things. 
people getting sick in front of me. You know, like the V word, sick. Oh, I get so nervous when someone has got an upset stomach around me. I can't help it. There's a reason. I don't know what the reason is. Maybe my babysitting caused so much trauma that that makes me really nervous. And then number two, the older I get, a couple years ago, I was in a car accident, not a bad accident at all. But it was enough that now when I'm riding in a car, I'm extremely nervous, especially on the highway. I used to not be like that. I used to be able to drive in traffic. And now traffic makes me a nervous wreck. Oh, Wanda, being rushed. I kind of, yeah, I get nervous then too. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Doris, just keep on practicing, keep on practicing, and before you know it, you'll have some triangles that come out pretty, pretty, pretty. Chantel, learning something new that you've never done before makes you nervous. I think we all feel like that, right? Doing something new, but then don't you feel a sense of accomplishment? Once you get past that, and you're like, well, that doesn't make me nervous anymore. Jerry, the question, question number three is what makes you really, really nervous? I know, Sherry, I could not take California traffic. I already know that. I already know that. I see on TV the traffic y'all have, and I'm like, oh, heck no. <laughs> no, no. Hello, Miss Kitty. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're recovering really well. Ooh, being called into the boss's office. Yes. Even if it's for something good, you're like, what did I do? <laughs> All right. So I'm hoping that if you're sewing along with me live, you've had a chance to make your little half square triangles. There was four of them. We're going to go ahead and piece this block together. So to do that, I'm going to flip the two and a half by two and a half background onto our half square triangle. And you know what? Just to make it really simple, I'm going to mark that seam. Because I don't want to turn this around and sew the wrong side. <laughs> right there. right there and right there now I'm going to chain piece mine I'm going to bring all of these four pieces over and we're sewing that with a quarter inch seam allowance as well There's one, you can go as slow as you like. Go nice and straight. There's two. Oh, the dentist makes me a nervous wreck too, yes, <laughs> yes. There's three. I had a tooth pulled. Actually, I've had two teeth pulled uh, so far this year, and we're working on getting a partial. I should have had my partial already if it weren't for this quarantining stuff, right? Should have already had it. But the first of the two teeth he pulled took an hour and 45 minutes. It should not take that long to pull a tooth. The rest of the day, I was just like this, on edge. All 
All right, there's our four, our four little units. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those apart. I think you're gonna find it a lot easier if you press these towards the background so that this seam lays nice and flat. I know for me, it's the lighter side, but I think you're gonna have an easier time if you press it that way or if you press your seams open. I tend to be a very nervous person, yes. Here's our first piece. I don't know, Miss Hazel. It had roots that went down and curved in front of the tooth in front of it. So it took forever to get it out of there. There's one. There's two. There's the third one. And the fourth one. Gonna give you just a minute to catch up. It's so great to see everybody. Thank y'all for spending part of your Friday with me. Make sure you hang tight because I'm going to give you the next two blocks here in just a little bit. This block's going to come together pretty quick at this point. Yes, Hazel. Yeah, L. Never had a tooth that hard to be pulled out. Never, never. I have one more question lined up for today, but I'm going to give it a minute. I'm going to give it a minute. At this point, we're going to take our four and a half inch piece and flip it right over top of the section that we just joined. Thank you, Miss Chantel. Thank you. Flip it over. Flip it over. And you don't have to mark them if you don't want to. Just easier for me to stay tr on track and not sew it to the wrong side, get it flipped over at the sewing machine. Now we're gonna chain piece these four units. There's one. Debbie, that sounds like an awesome idea with that little mat you have. There's our third. And uh, we're sewing together our last unit. We'll 
cut those apart. And we're going to press these open. Again, because of this seam here and the little half square triangle, you can either press it open or press it towards the longer, bigger side of the unit. I'm going to go do that. There's our first one. Our second one. Our third one. And our fourth one. So there we go. At this point, we're doing a simple four patch to finish up this block, right? Our fourth and last question for the day. We're gonna finish on a bright note today. <laughs> Finishing on a bright note. What is uh, your favorite scent? Like I love downy fabric softener. I love it. Oh, I love some downy fabric softener. I also like the Harvest candle from Yankee Candle. Love it. I love the smell of gardenias and magnolias and jasmine. I love the smell of lemon, lemon verbena. Uh, I love the smell of cut grass or the smell that happens right before or after a thunderstorm. What are your favorite scents, smells? I love the smell of nachos. And tacos. And fajitas. Oh, buttercream frosting. Yes. Lavender and roses. Yes. Bounce outdoor fresh. I'll have to try that one. Citrus. Oh, that's a nice clean smell, right? Oh, I cannot wait to go through and read, read all of your answers. Jeannie, you're allergic to all smells. Oh, I'm so sorry. So we're not finishing on a bright note for you then, are we? <laughs> I'm so sorry. At this point, we're doing a simple four patch, y'all. Yes, I've been craving some fajitas for two, y'all. And some guacamole and melty cheese dip and white sauce, homemade salsa. All right, let's flip these blocks over and get them sewn together. I don't, I'm not even going to mark the seams now. Try to keep them straight. Question from Debbie. Let me go through and see. Yeah, I just answered that one. <laughs> I love Mexican food. We're gonna line up the first two blocks and get those done. We're gonna bring over the second seam. Give those a quick press. 
Oh, Sherry, I would love your recipe for fajitas. Yes, ma'am. Do you put them on a sizzly plate when you're done to serve them? Does it sizzle? So there's that half and uh, this half, I'm pressing that way. Just like that. And then we have one more seam to sew to finish up this block. We're going to turn the bottom right on top of the top unit. My seams on the top section are going to the left. The seam on the bottom is going to the right. That's going to cause that to nest right in the middle. Right in the middle. I'm going to give this a press and then we have our finished block. Yes, it does sizzle. Yay. <laughs> That's important, you know. Okay, y'all, for the big reveal of our zigzag squares block, there we go. There we go. I really like it. I think it's super cute. I think it's super cute. I think it's going to look great. A great addition to the blocks up on the wall. I like it a lot. If you want to share your picture, share your pictures. You can post them over on the Creative Crew group. There's a link in the description box below. Brings you right over to the Creative Crew group. If you haven't joined that Facebook group yet, make sure to answer the two security questions or we can't join you in because we're... You got to answer the two questions. If you, if you forget to do it, we can't join you in, but they're easy questions. So there is our finished zigzags block. Really simple, right? Yeah, that's a fun block. That's a fun one. It's going to look great up on the well up up on the wall. <laughs> So if you hang tight for just a second, I'm going to give you the measurements and the block for tomorrow. If you want to jot that stuff down, I'm going to leave this on the screen for anybody who's still sewing along, who hasn't had a chance to see it. <clears throat> yes, I think that's super duper cute. Yes, Chantel does a great job moderating. I'm so thankful. The other day we almost had an issue, but she was on it. She was on it. Right, Dorothy? If you break this block down into different segments and put it together as a four patch, it makes it so much easier. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and switch the screen. I'm gonna show you tomorrow's block, but I don't want you to go away yet because I'm gonna show you the block we're doing for Easter too, and you might have a little bit of homework before Sunday, okay? Let me show you tomorrow's block. Tomorrow we're making the tea leaf block. Again, it's gonna be another eight inch quilt block. 
Again, we're going to be doing half squared triangles, but look how cute this block is. I'm going to leave this up on the screen for a few minutes. You can screenshot it or take some notes of the measurements. If you miss it, come back and pause the video and then you'll have more time to write everything down. Let me show you what this quilt block repeated as a quilt would look like. I think that's pretty fantastic, right? You could do different hues of green, different tea leaves. You could pick a blue background fabric, like the tea leaves are in the sky. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty fantastic, especially if you love tea like I do. I would make a tea quilt, a tea leaf quilt. I love myself some sweet tea now, I'm gonna tell you that. Yes, the tea leaf. Sue, you've never seen this one before. I've never made this one before. I'm gonna do it for the first time with you tomorrow. The tea leaf block. Oh, y'all are so welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you, Ms. Sherry, for the uh, fajita recipe. Now I just need some melty white cheese and some white sauce and some homemade salsa. I, I do make really good and made this block a little bit bigger. It would be a great tree, right? Maybe you don't have to make the trunk any longer. Maybe it's long enough. Oh, Lady Grey tea. Earl Grey is my most favorite, but Lady Grey takes a second, a close second place behind Earl Grey tea. Earl Grey is my most favorite. So yes, the tea leaf block. If you didn't have a chance to get these measurements, come back on the replay and pause the screen. I want to go ahead and talk about Sunday's block, okay? Because I'm going to give you that today. I'm going to give you Sunday's block today. Sunday is Easter, y'all. So I came up with a little bunny, and we're going to do some applique on Sunday. Now, there are two ways that you can get this file, okay? In the description box. And some of you might not know where the description box is. So if you don't know, I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to show you right now, okay? If you're watching on a cell phone, you've got the live chat box open. Close the live chat and then look next to the title of this video. You'll see a little gray arrow that's pointing down. If you touch that little gray arrow, the drop box pops up. If you're on the computer, look underneath of the title of this video. You'll see a caption that says, see more or show more. It might be underneath of the information for this video in the middle of your screen. Somewhere there should be a caption that says, see or show more. Click on that and it opens up the description box. There is a link for this free pattern for the bunny. It's a two page PDF. If you're a member of the Creative Crew Facebook group, I have added this file to the file section. And for the next couple of days, it's pinned to the top of our feed on our group. So you can download it from a Creative Crew group or you can go to my Dropbox. You don't have to have a Dropbox account. It does make it easier, but you don't have to have one. It's free if you want to download Dropbox. So there's two different ways. Now, if you do not have a printer, but you still want to make this block, the pattern comes in two pages. I had to break the bunny down because he's too big to fit on one sheet, right? He comes on two pages. It's one PDF that you download. If you don't have a printer,
There we go. <laughs> I was frozen for a second. Thank you so much, Miss Chantel. Yeah, I saw the little spinning thing and I was like, oh no. The green light came on and we're back. So yeah, call up a friend, call up a kiddo, call up your neighbor. If you don't have a printer, maybe someone you know can print it out for you. Uh, Miss Wanda, she doesn't have a printer, but she figured out if she holds up a piece of paper to the screen, she was able to trace the bunny that way. So she downloaded the bunny and then she opened up the first page and traced it on paper from her computer screen. And she said it was pretty close to being accurate size. And then she opened up the page two and she was able to trace that way. So she didn't even have to have a printer to get her bunny traced. So that's an idea as well. So yes, the bunny comes in two parts. Uh, it's going to be bigger. It was too big to fit on one sheet of paper. Okay, so it's broken down into two. This bunny is mirror imaged. And so it's ready to trace with a fusible like heat and bond light or wonder under any of your fusible applique products. You're ready to trace. If you want to do your bunny, pardon me, with freezer paper and glue, then you'll need to trace, hold this up to the light like a window or a light pad, trace the image onto the back side of the paper, and then trace with the freezer paper, okay? All it's really gonna do is uh, factor in whether your bunny is facing to the left or to the right, right? Nadine, try uh, closing down YouTube and then come right back. I did mine in brown, so it's a little chocolate bunny. Anyway, it is in the description box of today's video. It'll be in the description box of tomorrow's video. And it'll be in the description box of Sunday's video. It's going to be pinned to the top of the Creative Crew group until Sunday as well. So there's two different ways that you can get it. Maybe if you know someone here and you're not sure how to use Dropbox and you don't do Facebook, maybe you know someone here and they can email it to you, right? There's so many ways we can get this file to you so that you can play along if you want to. Some really great ideas you could do with this block. Let me show you what it looks like. If you repeat the bunny over and over again and make a little chocolate bunny Easter quilt. This is what it would look like. I think that's adorable. You could do all of your bunnies in different Easter colors, pastels. I think that would be amazing. You could do the bunny on some placemats, some mug rugs, some centerpieces, table runners. You could do it as a border for an Easter quilt. You could applique this onto pillowcases, decorate for Easter in your bedroom. You could applique the bunny on a sweatshirt or a t-shirt for Easter. Happy Easter, y'all. There's so many different things you could do with it. So many different things you could do with it. I really like the Easter bunny quilt. I think that's cute. You could do your bunnies in different directions. I was saying on Facebook a little earlier, I don't know if it would be too morbid or not, but to put like a little bite mark out of his ear, <laughs> like a chocolate bunny with a bite taken out of him. Is that too mean? I think that would be cute. I think that would be cute. So yes, 
I wanted to go ahead and show you this block a couple days early so that if you're going to have to get creative in ways to print this out, you have a day or two to call up your neighbor or your kiddos and have it printed and dropped off or you go pick it up. That way everybody can play along if they want to do it on Sunday. Yeah, you could add some Easter eggs next to them. You sure could. That would be cute. You sure could. So I've had so much fun with you today. I hope the rest of your Friday is fantastic. We did this zigzag squares block. I'm going to have fun putting that up on the design wall here in just a little bit. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow is the tea leaf block. There we go. That's what we're doing tomorrow. I cannot wait to see you then. Going to have so much fun reading your babysitting stories tonight. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.